This month, Taiwan conducted long-range flight tests of its indigenous Tengen-2 drone, marking a key step in the country's ambitions to reinforce its defenses and achieve weapon self-sufficiency. The drone took off from Hualien's Chaishan Air Base and soared for about three hours over the sea. Due to safety concerns and restricted capabilities, past experiments were done near the coast. Because all communications equipment must operate flawlessly for extended flights over open water, the test flight validated Taiwan's improvements in drone command and control. The optical equipment and surveillance capabilities of the drone were also validated during the tests. In 2016, the National Chungshan Institute of Science and Technology produced the Tengyun-2. It looks similar to the US MQ-1 Predator and can shoot the same AGM-114 Hellfire missiles. Taiwan expects to begin combat tests with the drone next month and build a combat squadron with the four MQ-9B Sea Guardian drones it bought from the United States in 2020. The test drone is an improved version of a first-generation drone that crashed during flight testing last February. An American-made engine, increased thrust, higher range, more payloads, and improved flight control system, and a triple backup power system are among the changes on the test unit. The Chungshan Institute has also produced four more drones in addition to Tengyun-2. The Albatross-2 and Cardinal-2 surveillance and espionage drones with ranges of 180 to 50 kilometers respectively are among them. Tengyun and Shenxiang, the other two drones, are hovering munitions built for kamikaze assaults and ground targets. The success of Turkey's Bayraktar drones in Ukraine prompted Taiwanese President Chai Ingwen to promote Taiwan's own combat drone research. Whether for military or civilian usage, it's critical for us to accelerate our drone development since it'll be a critical issue for the next generation, she said in a statement last month. The Tengyun-2 and other drones are being developed to assist Taiwan's porcupine strategy which comprises having a large number of small assets that are extremely survivable and devastating on the battlefield. This entails the deployment of a large number of distributed, transportable, and affordable anti-air and anti-ship defenses that might withstand China's initial air and missile attacks while remaining ready to defend Taiwan. Taiwan would have to be self-sufficient and create these key weapons as part of such a strategy. Taiwan's defense minister, Chi Kuo Cheng, stated earlier this month that the pricing for 12 U.S.-made MH-60R anti-submarine helicopters was too exorbitant and beyond Taiwan's competence. Furthermore, the crisis in Ukraine has put a burden on U.S. supply routes for weapons to Taiwan. Taiwan stated this month that the delivery of 40 M109A6 Paladin self-propelled coitzers has been delayed by four years, with the delivery date being pushed back from 2023 to 2026. A shipment of Stinger anti-aircraft missiles may also be postponed until 2026, according to the Taiwan Defense Ministry. The Ukrainian army is in high demand for self-propelled coitzers and manned portable air defense systems for counter-battery fire and low-level air defense, perhaps leaving a few of these weapons for the U.S. to spare for Taiwan. Furthermore, due to the huge demand for these weapons, U.S. politicians are concerned that the country will run out of them before it can meet its own needs. As a result, weapons shipments to Taiwan may be put lower on those U.S. priority list as the latter may prioritize its own military needs and those of Ukraine ahead of Taiwan's. Taiwan has a pressing need to create its own defense sector in order to carry out its porcupine strategic plan and lessen its dependency on U.S. arms imports. Taiwan declared in March that it would increase its missile production capacity from 207 to 497 rounds per year, with the Tiankung surface-to-air missile, Tianxian air-to-air missile, Wanxian air launch cruise missile, and Xiongfeng anti-ship missile being prioritized. Taiwan plans to start producing its own attack drones with a protection pace of 48 units per year, in addition to missiles. Taiwan's overall defense concept, the country's policy for dealing with a hypothetical Chinese invasion in a resource-constrained environment, includes unmanned systems. Unmanned systems such as the Tengen-2 and other types will greatly enhance Taiwan's target acquisition, early warning, and tactical reconnaissance capabilities under this plan. These drones might be used to keep an eye on specific targets on the battlefield giving them an asymmetric edge. Furthermore, the Taiwanese government claimed a significant breakthrough in talks with the European Union about semiconductor corporations, which might pave the way for Taiwanese chipmakers to develop new plants in Europe. According to Reuters, Taiwan's economy minister, Wang Meihua, stated in a statement that the country will strive to be a trusted partner for the EU in the semiconductor industry in order to stabilize Europe's supply chain. Wang met with Sabine Weyand, Director General for Trade at the European Commission to discuss the semiconductor industry. Weyand is focused on cooperating with other countries on industry issues. The achievement comes as the EU attempts to persuade Taiwanese chipmakers, including founder behemoth TSMC, 
to build some new factories in the bloc. The initiative is part of the EU's proposed European Chips Act, which was announced in February and aims to boost European semiconductor competitiveness and resilience while also supporting digital transformation and environmental sustainability goals. TSMC has previously stated that it is in the early stages of planning a new plant in Europe, with the focus on Germany. Apple, NVIDIA, and AMD are among the companies that use the Taiwanese foundry giant's chips. The most obvious area of concern in the EU-Taiwan semiconductor discussions is the threat of assault from China, which claims Taiwan as its own. Taiwanese Premier Su Tseng Chang expressed alarm a few months ago that China was stepping up its efforts to penetrate Taiwan and acquire access to its chip technology. As a result of this fear, Taiwan proposed stronger legislation to dissuade China from doing so, which China denounced as a provocative smear. The EU has already persuaded Intel, which has relaunched its foundry business, in order to compete with Taiwan to invest in new projects in the bloc. In March, the semiconductor behemoth announced a $36 billion investment throughout Europe in manufacturing, research and development, chip design and foundry services, including a $19 billion chip facility in Magdeburg, Germany. The meeting between Taiwan and the EU came a day after the island nation began a new trade talks with the U.S. in an effort to secure its tech supply lines. China's foreign ministry responded by warning against the talks, stating that U.S. actions on Taiwan will only drive the region to a disastrous position. Furthermore, Taiwan's government has imposed a stringent prohibition on the export of computer chips and chip manufacturing equipment to Russia and Belarus, making it even more difficult for the two countries to obtain new processors in the wake of other countries' export bans. Because Taiwan is the world's largest advanced chip manufacturing hub, the export ban imposed by Taiwan's Ministry of Economic Affairs, which was reported last week, will create challenges for Russia and Belarus to find chips for a variety of electronics, including computers, phones, and televisions. Russia has already been trying to replace x86 chips from Intel and AMD that it can no longer obtain due to U.S. and other countries' export sanctions. As a result, Russia has turned to China for x86-compatible CPUs for laptops that will be far slower than most recent systems. The country is also moving to servers powered by its own Elbrus processors, which Russia's biggest bank has deemed to be insufficient for a variety of reasons. Taiwan's new limitations on chip exports to Russia and Belarus will put the two countries under even more strain. Because the export embargo covers semiconductors with a clock speed of more than 25 megahertz, Russia and Belarus will be unable to obtain chips from Taiwan that are speedier than Intel's higher-end i386 microprocessors from the 1980s. It's impossible to imagine processors as quick as Intel's initial Pentium CPUs from the early 1990s. Exports of chip-making devices to Russia and Belarus have also been prohibited by Taiwan's Ministry of Economic Affairs. This includes lithography equipment, which is required for chip production. China's government reacted angrily to the news, publishing a statement on Monday accusing Taiwan of grandstanding and pursuing clout with a new export embargo. However, considering China's continued aggressiveness towards Taiwan, its discontent with Taiwan's growing ties to the United States and Europe, and the Middle Kingdom's friendship with Russia, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Do you believe Taiwan's next-generation drones will work up to their expectations? Let's know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content.